Well, that's not bad. I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, good evening. And it's an honor for me to be here in Japan again. So I've been requested to talk a little bit about uh, neuroenergetic kinesiology. Little bit how it works. And then I'm going to demonstrate. Okay, so um, my name is Hugo Tobar. And I'm the CEO of the International College of Neuroenergetic Kinesiology. And well, I've written a lot of stuff anyway. Um, now, first, what I'll do is talk a little bit about a model of how kinesiology works. And this is called the balance triangle. Uh, it's a model that I developed to explain how um, kinesiology or in fact any kind of imbalance works. So when I say imbalance, I mean problems that we have in our life. And so we have uh, problems can be, we have many different types of problems. We can have physical ones. My foot hurts. Or, you know, I have a uh, a pain in my stomach. Or my thyroid doesn't function properly. We can have um, psychological problems. And that can be to do with, uh, and, and when I say psychological problems, these are usually problems to do with either thinking of thoughts or emotions. Like, for example, you might be angry all the time. Or you always have negative thoughts about a certain topic or person. And then, the, now the other areas we can have uh, imbalances can be also in our spiritual self. Like you might know what your spiritual path is. Or you have a blockage in your spiritual development. And many people have, there's many different ways of developing yourself spiritually. Okay. Um, so, this, so these problems, when you have a problem, there's always three characteristics to every problem in your life. Like there can be a um, psychological aspect to it. So that's the emotions or thoughts that you, you have around the problem. 
、例えばある問題に関して感情的思考的に持っているものがありますよね。So you might have a sore foot, But if at the time that you hurt your foot, something else happened to you, you've got all, all kinds of emotions around the sore foot. Now, there's also, with any kind of problem, there's always some way it manifests in the body. Some way it manifests in the So even if you're, you've got a problem with too much anger, for instance, when you're angry, you, your muscles tense up. Your face changes, your breathing changes, your blood pressure goes up. <laughs> And if you're angry too much, this starts staying in your body. And so this can manifest somewhere in your body. And that's a neurological function, that is how neurology works. Because when you experience an emotion, all the effects that you feel are in your body, are created by neurology. Like how your blood pressure rises. How your muscles tense. How your breathing changes. How your heart beats faster. And this is all neurological function. Now, the other aspect to the, the balanced triangle is our energetic structures. I'm here to talk about kinesiology. And kinesiology is、um, a, a way of using, of balancing energetic structures to resolve problems. So we use the energetic structures and we, we, we use that to help balance the anatomy. But also to help resolve the、um, psychological component. Now, you have different components to energetic anatomy. I'm not going to talk about them all here today. We have the chakra system. Uh, described a lot in the Indian culture, in the tantric and yogic textbooks.、ね、We have、uh, meridians and acupoints. And that、um, described a lot in traditional Chinese medicine. So they're the most well known kind of、uh, energetic structures. Other ones are nadis. Nadis are channels that connect chakras, like meridians connect acupoints. And then you have the aura. And then you have the、uh, figure eight energies, which is like your 
etheric webbing. Okay, just to show you some examples. This is a picture of meridians on the front of the body. So people who have studied kinesiology, I mean in the first class, you start learning about them. And, and it's like this, you have the energy that flows through. We call them energetic structures because there's an energy and the energy we call chi flows through these meridians. Okay. And that flows from an acupoint to acupoints. <coughs> then we have chakras. And in India they call them the lotuses. That's because they look like a lotus. That's if you can see them. And what they do is they uh, bring the, the energy they bring they call prana. Which is like chi, but it's on a different kind of frequency or dimension of it. Okay. So we're going to use these structures to help identify where stress is in the body. Uh, depending on the issue. Okay, and and later when I do a demonstration, I mean, I don't know what we're going to do, but I'll I will use my system and, and the way it works to find how I'm going to balance it and then do a balance on that. But just to show you how with muscle testing we use an indicator muscle. So this is a model of how this works. Because in kinesiology you use a muscle test. But why does a muscle test work? And what I'm offering here is a neurological model of how that works. So to understand that, you have to understand of the, the model of what's called the triune brain developed by Paul McLean, a neuroscientist. The triune brain. And so that means we have three levels of the brain. So the highest level is the conscious brain. Right now, if you're hearing what I'm saying or watching this, you are conscious of what I'm saying, or if you can't understand me, at least what the translator is saying. <laughs> Okay, so, so the, but the higher brain enables you to identify stress on a conscious level. So imagine one day you're walking down the street, walking along, having a nice day, and you walk around the corner, this is big, enormous tiger. 
<laughs> okay. Now this tiger, so what, what does your brain do? You go, your brain says tiger. You see a tiger, that goes into your brain. And your brain goes, tiger, large cats that eat people. <laughs> and so you like go, so what do you do? You go up and pat the tiger and stick your head in its mouth? I don't think so. <laughs> so your higher brain goes, oh my god, a tiger? I mean, you're not going to say, what the hell is a tiger doing in the saga, you know? <laughs> well, you go, no, tiger. And then, but, and so then this information gets sent down to the next level of the brain. And this is the limbic brain. Now, the limbic brain has two main functions. It has, it has the emotional brain, but also the memories. So your emotional brain goes, um, so the, the limbic brain decides, well, the information comes in, am I going to be emotional or not? So if you've never seen a tiger before and didn't know what it is, and extremely, um, I don't know, brave, so if your limbic brain says no emotion, you might look at it and go, oh, what's that? Oh, well, <laughs> or you might go, the limbic brain goes, yes, let's be emotional, but be scared. Because, because it can use access memories. And you might, you might remember that when you were a kid, you were read stories about big tigers in India eating people and all this kind of thing. So you might see tiger, ah, and... <laughs> <laughs> But you've made the decision to be emotional. Now, once this decision has been made, this uh, we have to, you know, like if I stand here and say, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm really emotional now." I'm so scared of the tiger. Really scared me. Or you might, you know, someone's really annoying. Or someone's really annoying and they make you angry, so yeah, I'm really angry today. Yeah, you've really annoyed me and made me mad, I'm mad. You know, you really shouldn't do that again. Now, if I speak like that, you're not going to really believe me that I'm being emotional, are, are, are you? Because it, it just doesn't seem like that. And, and down in, in the brainstem and in the reptilian brain, in the lowest level of brain, is where you organise the response in the body for an emotion. And so this um, this response is um, um, so for all the tensing of the muscle. 
all the um, changing in your blood pressure, how your heart beats, how your breathing changes, all this is organized by the brainstem. The brainstem is like a conductor of an orchestra. And so it's like it goes, okay, raise the blood pressure, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> tense the muscles, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> raise the heartbeat, <laughs> <laughs> breathe really fast, <laughs> you know, and so on and so forth. <laughs> And all those reactions in the body are the experience you have when you are feeling emotion. But what's particularly interesting is how it goes into the body. So the brainstem sends the information down into your spinal cord. And the spinal cord has all these um, uh, places where it innovates all the muscles in your body. So when you experience something stressful, and it can even be a memory of a stressor. You still get the same reaction in your body. And so the um, the muscle test. So, so when when you, so when you have this stress, you get an effect in your muscles. So when we use a muscle test, what a muscle test can tell you is it can tell you about stress because that's how the body's neurology works. Okay. So, and that's how muscle testing works. So, you know, you might think of something stressful and all of a sudden the muscle goes away. Okay. So, um, now, the muscle test can actually, there can be four possible answers of a muscle test, or four possible reactions when we test a muscle. And it's always depending on what the issue is. So if I go to one person, and I say, okay, think about your father. And so if you, this person has a really good relationship with their father, no problems, no stress, you test the muscle, and nothing happens. It's fine. Now, if you saw the person the next day, and they just had an argument with their father, you say, okay, think about your father, test the muscle, and it might go weak. Okay. Now, but it's you know, it's the, the first stage is what we call um, it, it's an indicator change because the muscle has changed. Uh, 
Now, if we go to another person, and we ask them to think about their father, and maybe they've been arguing with their father for like, I don't know, a few years. So it's gone into like stress over a long period of time. And so when you test the muscle, it doesn't go weak. But it's really like tense. And we call that over facilitated. And, and this is like the adaption phase, that you had to adapt to this stressful relationship with your father in your life. So it's it's like stress, long-term stress, it's a stress that's been around for a long time. And then you've got under facilitation. And that's maybe you've been arguing for someone's been arguing with their father for a really long period of time. And you um, test their muscle. And it just goes. And this is the exhaustion phase because they're just totally worn out with that argument. So the, the muscle test can tell us four things. There's either no stress, there's either the first stage of stress or short term stress. There's either second stage of stress or long-term stress. Or there's third stage of stress, which is you're exhausted, it's worn you out. You can't live in that adaptive, long-term stress phase. You can only hold that for a certain amount of time. Then you've gone into collapse. So with the balancing, with neuroenergetic kinesiology, we're going to use, we use formatting to identify stress. And formatting is a system that uses the acupressure system and the chakra system. So we use a combination of them to, to give like a holographic representation of stress somewhere within the the human being. So it could be stress in the, um, uh, it could be emotional or psychological stress. It could be physiological stress or anatomical stress. It could be even spiritual stress. You know, and so we use this to identify the different um, um, different type of stress and then what kind of balancing we're going to do. So we can balance chakras. So this is psycho-spiritual stress. We could do emotional balancing. Or well, we could do some form of physical balancing. So we could buy like balance the endocrine system. The immune system, the nervous system, 
learning problems, structure, biochemistry, and more. I ran out of space on this slide, so I just left it at that. <laughs> But you know, anything really. Okay, so、um, I'm going to do a demonstration now. And so a volunteer we had with.、Um, ボランティアをお願いしたいんですけれどもお願いしたいんですが。You wanna come? Uh -huh. よろしいですか。Yeah. Okay, so come out, come and stand here. どのような問題でしょうか。So it's the eyes. Okay, what's the problem with the eyes? I have a pretty bad astigmatism for my right eye. So right eye. Yep. Near sighted, close eyes. Near sighted. And how does that manifest in your vision? I'm, I'm, you, you see me as blurry. Yeah. Okay. So, so the effect, so this is the diagnosis they've probably got off the medical profession. And they're good at that too. And the effect is that she's nearsighted. Okay, so you can lie, lie down with your head on that end and take your glasses off. <laughs> okay, so you've had kinesiology before? Yeah. Okay, so I'll just,、uh, just make sure I've got a. Okay, so. The first part of the balance is the issue. And this is always defined by the client. So the second part is what we call setup. Now, the setup is defined, is basically to translate. The client's issue into the language of kinesiology. Okay. So、um, now the problem is with the eyes. So I'm going to use a format from neuroenergetic kinesiology for the eyes. So just showing up the stress showing on the right eye. And as soon as I put the format in for the right eye, I've got the indicator muscle over facilitated. Okay, so、um, I need to, that means there's like a long term stress on the right eye. 
So I need to de-stress it with the powers of stress technique. This is from the neural emotional pathways level one or NEPS one course. And this is telling me about um, emotion. And so this stress is to do with fear. Okay. So there's some kind of fear associated with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. So I want you to look straight ahead. And just don't know, don't follow it, just look straight ahead. And so I've, because vision is very, the visual field is mapped onto our nervous system. So I need to activate her visual field and all parts of the visual field. And I can only do that if she looks straight ahead. And then I'll make a visual stimulus that moves in all different kinds of ways in her whole visual field. And uh, so now what I'm doing is now this powers of stress and it's fear again. So I'm just, just diffusing the fear. Because um, one, one of the places we have muscles in our eyes and they can be affected by the emotional outputs from the brainstem. It's one of um, the eyes of one of what I call as four different neurological outputs from the brainstem. You have the eyes, you have the face muscles, especially the TMJ, you have your body muscles, and then also the uh, sympathetic nervous system. And neurologically, they're the four different um, outputs defined by the neurological pathways that come from the brainstem. It's a neurological definition. Now, if I want to be complete with the um, there's some other tests I can do for the eyes. So look at this. Okay, so that, look at that. That is like third stage of stress. That is really, well, she's got something coming towards her, that must be exhausting. Okay, 
So now it's not fear, now we've got rage showing. So let's do it the other way. No reaction. So that's not stressful. Now just follow it. Okay, that's got stress. Back to fear. Okay. Now we've got um Um, other things we can do, other eye positions. Okay, that's enough anyway. So we had, you know, something coming towards her like this, and just the general setup all. Um, and when we, with vision, when you set up vision, if you have them looking straight ahead, you access the visual field. But if you have them following it, then you're accessing the ability to follow something, so that really uses all, starts using all the eye muscles. Okay, so now the next phase, so that's set up, so the third phase is actually the balance. So, So now I have to find out how am I going to balance this anyway? I mean, is it, do I have to do emotional balance? Or some kind of psycho spiritual chakra balance? Or do I have to get in and balance the eyes? So that could be in terms of neurology. Because vision is a neurological function. Or is it developmental? Was there some kind of stress in her development as like in utero as a fetus or later that created that created stress? Is it there? Or is it like a reflex? Like we have uh, primitive reflexes. Or is it something something I wouldn't even think of? I mean, it could be hormonal to do with stress. Or it could be even something to do with the immune system, you don't know. Or is there a stress in the structure, like in the actual eye muscles? Or something? There's, so there's so many different possibilities. And in neuroenergetic kinesiology, there's a balance for each one, I just have to find which one it is. 
で神経エネルギー記念ショロジーとしてはそれぞれ一つ一つ見ていかなければいけないわけです。So I'm going to use and I'm going to use a series of formats to identify. でいくつかですねこれからフォーマッティングを行って特定を行っていきたいと思います。So we'll test it. Is it emotional? No. 感情違いです。Is it structural? 構造的なものではない。Um, is it to do with the、uh, nervous system? 神経システム。No. 違います。Mm. Mm. 神経伝達物質。Biochemistry. 生化学。Reflex. 反射。It's a reflex. 反射です。So, okay. <coughs> okay, now it's like. <coughs> So now we've gone into the third, third stage. Initially, she was like trying to hold it.、Um, people try and compensate with muscle testing. So if I'm not sure, I, I test the muscle three or four times in a row.、Mm -hmm. And if it's good, every, every time it should have the same response. But what I found if you test it four times and they're trying to compensate for it, after the third or fourth test, it gives way and shows this true response. So that means I have to go to the reflex work and look at and see what kind of reflex there is. And there's a number of visual reflexes that it could be. You could have a visual morrow. And that is the morrow is a startle reflex. Tomorrow reflex. Tomorrow reflex. Hang on a sec, I'll show you. Okay. If some if something frightens you, go like this. That's startled. Okay. Now, what causes you to startle? It could be something visual. Like if someone throws a ball in your face. If you just stand there, go, oh, there's a ball coming. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Now that's not normal. <laughs> Or what? Or what? No. You should go, ball, oh, like this. Now that's a normal startle. It should be there. It's there to protect you. このびっくり発射っていうのは自分を守るために、えー、体に身についている発射反射なんですね。But if it's overactive, ただこれが過剰ですと、you know if someone if you walk up to someone and go oh hi you know just move your hand like this into their face。誰かがこんにちはって言ってきて、you know they shouldn't react but sometimes they do。これにこんな反応してしまうことになってしまいます。Very sensitive visually。非常に今ビジュアルにセンシティブに。You can have an auditory startle as well. Now, if there's a really loud noise behind you, you should go, ah!、Oh. Oh, that's a noise. But what can happen with, and especially you see this in school children, maybe that's the voice of their teacher. They just hear their teacher's voice and they go, ugh, like this.
or it could be um, uh, to do with、um, voice of the parents or something. So that's auditory. The most well known moro is the vestibular moro, and this is、uh, a reflex that's in, it's a primitive reflex, which means it's there when you're born. That's a definition of a primitive reflex, and this is when the head moves. That the whole body goes into like a startle, it's the vestibular.、Mm -hmm. Vestibular. What's the vestibular system? Yeah. You have to look it up. That's a car after you. バランスにあ前提形です前提形のものに関わるので、まあ、生まれた時から備わっている原始反射の一つモロ反射と呼ばれるものがあります。Okay, so I'm now the other the other kinds of visual reflexes you can have. あとですね、視覚として持っている原始反射としては、could be um um <coughs> You have a blinking reflex. Like if you put, like, like it won't happen to me, but if I went to you and put my finger very close to your eye, you start blinking. There's also accommodation reflex. Yeah, that means when something comes towards you, your eyes move in like this to follow it. It's called accommodation. 何かですね、えー、物が近づいてきたら目が中に寄ってくるんですね。And, um, so that's, that's again another kind of reflex. これも一つの反射です。And, uh, then you've got the, there's a pupillary light reflex as well. あとですね、照明に関、えー、ライトに関する反射もあります。Um, so that means when light gets brighter, your pupils should constrict because you need to, less, to let less light in. And when it gets darker, your pupils should dilate. Okay.、Um, So, they're the different kinds of visual reflexes we can have. So, I'm going to test for which one it is through the formats. Okay, this is the accommodation reflex. So again, rage. So the accommodation, and this is interesting. This is the accommodation is when when something comes towards you, you keep it in your focus. So your eyes actually have to come like this. Because what's characteristic of a reflex neurologically is there's always some kind of sensory stimulus. Every reflex is triggered by some kind of sensory stimulus. And then there's a motor response. Which means there's a response within some kind of muscle within your body. 
So neurologically, the accommodation reflex is you have a visual stimulus. So it comes towards you. And then it's um, the, then the, the motor response is the eye muscles. Bringing the eyes like this to your almost cross eye. You can bring it this close. You go like cross eye. And and that is the um, part of the the eye muscles that do that. Okay, so let's check it out. I'll just get the balance up here. Okay, I'll just put that there so I can see it. I mean, I mean, I was asked to demonstrate. I'm not going to explain um, the formats, but. So first format is for the retina. So the retina is in the eye. The, the retina is actually the sensory receptor. It's a little fear now. And so the, the job of the sensory receptor is to convert the job of the sensory receptor in the, it's in the retina mm -hmm. so the, the retina is a sensory receptor okay. so any kind of sensory receptor converts information from the environment into a neural signal Okay. So then the next one we want is the optic nerve. So, so these four maps are really stressed out. Yeah, there's a lot of stress each time I put a format in. So after the retina, the information passes to the optic nerve. So, um, And these formats now that we're getting into accessing stress within deep within the nervous system 
で神経血統の奥深くにあるストレスに今アクセスできるようにするコメントです。今私の手を通してですね、それがどんなに深いかということをまあ伝わってきます。And I can see that she's processing quite deeply. I can see that she's processing quite deeply because I can. Her eyes are moving like this. Under, she's got her eyes closed, but I can see the eyeball going like this. And seems to be when people process stress that they do move their eyes. Second. Okay, so next we've got is the um, Okay, so I'm just finishing off the neurological pathways. With the last formats there. But it's basically what I've done is balance formatted the whole neurology of the accommodation reflex. And so that is the, then we come to the fourth phase of the balance. And this is the correction. Okay. 
So now I have to see how I'm going to correct it. Uh, so I right eye chakra. So chin under energy in the right eye chakra. So this is the energy, this is the chakra. The eye chakra is to do with uh, non-verbal communication. So it could be like, you know, someone sends you some, like a non-verbal visual signal and you don't receive it. So that's like not being able to read body language. to do is to retest her eyes. But if people are spaced out, it's best to leave it a So how does your vision seem anyway? Okay. Anyway, so that's the balancing protocol. And, and it can t to really test it properly, we'd have to do all those, you know, this test and this test. But I don't want to do it while she's spaced out because that can be stressful. I would probably test it in about an hour or if it's a client, next time they come, retest it.
that was a demonstration of neuroenergetic kinesiology. Um, Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, now our clients had time to settle down and so she's come back and said she feels really good and she's ready to be retested. So can you tell us how you feel then? So the eyes are moving more fluidly. And still blurry vision? So she feels a lot better, a lot less stressed. The eyes are moving, but the vision's still blurry. So. But we actually didn't balance her for blurry vision. We balanced her for movement of the eyes. That's what the balance was for. The, the balance for blurry vision is another one. Okay, so let's retest, so if you can lie down. So the best thing to do is the setups. So I'll just get you to look straight ahead. Don't follow it. So I've just activated vision in a visual field. No stress. It's working really bad and it feels really good too. So let's try the convergence. So follow, look at that please. Again, no stress. How did that feel? Good? Okay, we can try. I didn't try this before, but that's divergence. Now, the other thing that showed stress was this. The, uh, so, follow this. No stress. And it feels really good, like her whole energy system is really comfortable with that. Before when I did those, it really stressed her out really a lot. Okay. So that's the effect, but I had to wait. If I'd done those tests straight after balancing, it would have been stressful for her because, you know, she was all dizzy and, you know, like, and you can't retest someone when they're like that because. Because it don't, when someone's like that, it doesn't matter what you do, it'll show stress. And the stress is not necessarily because of this, it's because her energy system's still reorganizing, so. It, it's, it's not really going to show you anything. It'll just show you to do something that she may be doing. Okay, good. Thank you.
Okay, so thank you again, and um, that concludes the demonstration of neuroenergetic kinesiology, and you've been able to see how we do the four stages of a kinesiology balance. Okay, thank you.